Well, good morning once again, and welcome to the second hour of today's edition of Uncommon Awareness. And once again, we're here with Nina Dolly Cardillo, a multi-talented woman um, with very eclectic, diversified areas of study in her life. She shared most, much of that, perhaps not all of that, with us in the first hour. And, you know, as a child... This is, you know, she's the kind of person, as a child, she understood that there's mystery and wonder in the world, and yet she couldn't find anyone to discuss that with her or share it with her, and so it set her on a lifelong quest to try and figure out what's going on. And one of the conclusions she's drawn from her life experience is the extent to which we are all mind-controlled. And when I say all, I don't mean that all of us are, you know, mind-controlled to the same degree as everyone else. But, um, you know, I did, I was, I said in the last segment before we went to the top of the hour break that in my own observations of what's happening, uh, it, it begins with birth. Um, and, and we think about the things that we do, you know, we think about birth in a hospital. They've, they've only recently begun to allow mothers to put their babies up to their breasts. You know, they took breastfeeding away and then there was circumcision and, um, just all sorts of ways of, and, and this, this is, this is, trauma enough that it has an impact on the psyche of, of, of human beings all over the world that are subjected to these really artificial, really unnatural ways of doing things and being bonded um, as families and communities. So, Nina, I just wanted to ask, I don't know where you want to start with this, um, but you, you've already shared, you know, you've had, you had the experience within, um, you know, the church and the ashram and different uh, organizations you became involved with and moved your way out of that. Um, you're working much more as an artist now um, rather than a musician. Got yourself involved in, you know, filmmaking and editing. Um, where do you want to start with the story of trauma-based mind control? Where did it start for you to really begin to define this as a discrete uh, topic, a discrete part of our, our social engineering? Um, well, first of all, I'd like to say, you know, like we could, like with mind control, the when I was in the Christians, they used to always call it conditioning. They didn't call it mind control, but we're conditioned. From the moment we're born, we are conditioned by whatever the society and culture we are in. And you can see that when you have a child, you immediately tell them these are the rules that you have to follow while you're here and you have to behave a certain way and I'm going to instill in you my belief system. So we get conditioned. We And we're very, the mind, we're very highly suggestible. That's the way the mind works. And the power of our words and the power of how we communicate and teach our children is part of how they become who they are. So that's the basics of where it really starts from. So when we get to the darker level of the mind control, they are, you know, I mean, and then you have the conditioning of your religions. You're in a certain school system. Religion, you are being trained to think a certain way, and you take tests, and if you don't answer the questions right, you don't pass. So our whole school system indoctrinates us into whatever it is that they want to teach us within that society. So coming from that level right there, I was always... I was always a person that thought outside the box. So I was always one of those kind of people that no matter what I was being told, I had questions because I was putting my intelligence forward. So in that sense, the whole idea of understanding conditioning and how we program ourselves came to me at a younger age. But it was later when I uh, actually read David Icke's books yep. where he started talking about Kathy O'Brien and her book, The Transformation of America. And that, that was one of those things when I first read, my first reaction was, oh, my God, I can't believe. This is too hard to believe. I just cannot accept this. But then I started observing. I started observing Hollywood. I started observing society. And when you hear about weird things going on in the news, you know, someone like Patty Hearst, who's the daughter of a big newspaper uh, corporate uh, um Entity, and then she suddenly becomes this like terrorist in the seventies. I don't know if you remember that. I do. But suddenly she had a momentary laugh when she was part of this liberation army, and suddenly was going robbing banks. And then all of a sudden she just switched back, and she was just like regular rich kid again. <laughs> so I observed all that kind of stuff, and I became a lot more curious about the whole thing of mind control, and actually started, you know, opening up to reading the material that's out there. And it's horrific. I mean, when you read these books that these people that have gone through this are 
writing, it, it just, it's horrible. It's horrible to even think that somebody could be going through that kind of stuff and that their own family would be involved in putting them through that. But through observation, I really feel there's a lot more truth to it than we might want to accept, actually. Well, and I'm inclined to agree with you. Um, <clears throat> We, we, had, we talked earlier about a personal experience. I won't name things specifically, but I asked you the question. I said a couple of days ago it downloaded on me. had this particular individual in my family because of an early childhood experience. Could they be someone who was really traumatically mind controlled? There's, a, there's certain um, behaviors and actions. and, and Anyway, I won't go into it. Later on, in a couple of weeks from now, I'm going to have a, a young woman on who succeeded in escaping. She was MK. She was part of MK Ultra, multiple personalities, and through through grace, you know, and just just uh, through grace, really, has been able to work her way out of it and has written a book. Because people think of this as a program that was done when? I don't know, 60s or when was MK mm-hmm. Ultra? Yeah. And again, listeners, there's, it's out there on the, you know, this is under the Freedom of Information Act. These are, this is our own mm-hmm. government. This is our own military. This, mm-hmm. this is sick, sick psychiatrists. I, just, mm-hmm. I ask you, please, whatever ails you, never go see a psychiatrist. It's an entirely corrupt and soulless uh, specialty of medicine. It's as though the rest of it isn't bad enough. Um, they're dangerous, dang- as far as I'm concerned. It's a very dangerous profession. Um, uh-huh. But you know, so you know, you have this opportunity to see what's going on with people. But again, I'm going to bring it back. I can think about experiences in my own life of being shamed or harassed or uh, made uh-huh. to stand out as somebody whose behavior was just egregious as far as what was considered acceptable. Uh-huh. And I wasn't a bad kid right? like you. I was just uh-huh. basically asking questions and and so forth. But there's there's other well, people, you know, what was it we're saying? Lady Die may have been multiple. That's why I made mm-hmm. earlier. The, I made that. There does now seem to be a strong correlation um, between multiple personality, multiple personality. Yeah. and mind control. Yeah. And I have, even when I was in high school, for some reason I was interested. In, I was thinking of becoming a psychologist. And um, I read Sybil. The book Sybil came out then. Yeah. And it was my first uh, encounter with a multiple personality topic. And that always fascinated me, the whole idea of someone, you know, splitting into multiple people. And at the time, you know, when I was in the Krishnas, I just assumed there was maybe a reincarnation bloop, that you have many different lives and many different personalities, and now you're fragmenting in this dimension, which that could be part of it. But understanding more now about the mind control techniques and the abuse that goes on behind what happens to these children uh, it makes sense to me that that's what would happen to you. Well, and Hollywood is a hotbed for this, particularly, you know, young, let's look at Miley Cyrus. And we yes. Have, you know, and they talk about handlers. There's a, a lot of um, contemporary personalities, actors, actresses, you name it, and individuals who observe them very closely and can say they're being handled right now. And yeah. explain to listeners what being handled means. Uh, well, originally my first encounter with that word was through Kathy O'Brien's book, The uh, Transformation of America. And uh, she talked about that because their handlers are the ones that have the codes. They have the ones that know how to handle the person to trigger them into different personalities to get them to perform when it's ready. And they pretty much manage them because the people who disassociate, they're split personalities, so they're not always, they don't really have a good sense of reality that they're in. And I think that's part of the part of the technique when they're trying to alter somebody's mind like that is to get them to not really know what reality they're in. So they mix fantasy. They mix a lot of fantasy with reality. And if you look at our society, we have a, a huge part of that. Where people, are, we really have a lot of fantasies going on. We have all our superhero movies and and just all the fantasy that we live in. And yet we have this pragmatic reality that we also have to sort of match the two together. And I think that's part of how people can't really grasp what's happening because there, there's too much information. It's too disjointed. Everything's too disjointed. They can't put it together. So they do that with the mind control victim. They make them disjointed so they can't put it together and they don't know. And, I, you know, I put myself in their place sometimes and imagine what, what is that like to be in this horrific situation and you don't even know what day it is or what time it is or what reality you're in and, and then, you know, you're out there in the public. And I think that if we really watch Hollywood more, you, they're slipping. You can see it slip a lot more. It's not as 
covert as it used to be. Um, because I, I believe it's because they do it on such a major scale, and it's their reality that they're forgetting, that they're forgetting that they're in this other reality that most people aren't existing in. Well, and I, I, I could call it their arrogance, but I could also say that as more and more people wake up to their own cognitive dissonance, that they're becoming more reckless because they're fearful that we may actually figure it out. Um, yeah. I, I, I see it as I see part of what's happening right now is them um, losing some control. But there mm-hmm. have been people who have said, if you want to know the future, look at Hollywood, because part of their sickness is is to reveal their their um, dystopian one world order. Right, uh-huh. is to reveal that dystopian one world order through filmmaking because Hollywood is completely controlled. Um, and again, you don't have to take my word for it. Listen, look, I just sort of look it up. Look it yeah, up. Yeah, really, just observe it. And we do know that some of the earlier, some of the earlier experiments, government-sanctioned experiments, did take place in orphanages, uh, mental hospitals. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are pulled home. The homeless people are pulled off the street. There have been some exposés on what's happening to young children and, and the homeless. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this entire underground market for this type of experimentation. How far can we take the human psyche? How, how much can we fracture it without mm-hmm. actually um, sending someone into a, you know, without them becoming an absolute 24-7 raving lunatic, right? Yeah. How much can we control? And, you know, when you take um, situations, I don't know if you've looked into this with respect to things like Columbine, when I first began to examine, something wasn't right, right, in the story. They, mm-hmm. Again, like, they're just, there's, there's so many holes in their story. There's so yeah. many questions they don't ask, issues they don't address, that you know you're mm-hmm. just being given theater. And so it, initially it looked like those, those young men may have been on um, psychotropics, but psych C, psychotropics are a way of making their mind more malleable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It does. You know. And so mm-hmm. now you begin to ask, well, were they, were they set up, you know? Was yes, that- I believe so. That, you know, the one kid's father is military, so that's all, you always question that when there's military involved in the family. Yeah, but I think they're also becoming more sophisticated. You know, a lot of the, a lot of what they do now in the mind control is they learn from the Nazis, doing it to the Jewish people in World War Two. Okay, well hold that but, thought. We're uh, going to talk because there's our music. When we come back, on, you know, we'll pick it right up with you know they're becoming more sophisticated. Okay, listeners, stay tuned. We'll see you in just a few moments. 